Hello everyone, I am Dr. Osman reporting once again from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the premier university of African scholarship. In the previous lecture, we looked at material balancing. We made a start with it and we looked at the notation on how to write molar flows, mass flows, molar and mass fractions as well. And we looked at the issue of independent and dependent variables and we also looked at dependent and independent balance equations. Um, in this lecture, we're going to look at an example on how to actually solve a material balance problem, what is necessary and how our approach and thinking should be. We'll start off with a simple example and thereafter we will look at more complicated examples and introduce more complicated concepts via these examples. Okay, so let's get straight to it. Okay, in this example we have a separator and we have an input to the separator of 100 kilomoles per hour, so that's our total uh, stream flow. Okay, N1. And we are given the mole fraction of just component B. In terms of our outputs, we are given the mole fraction of component A. And we are also given the mole fractions of component B and C in stream 3. Okay, component A is at stream 2. As you may notice, we do not have any molar flows for the stream 2 and stream 3. Now the way to approach this problem is to firstly draw up a degree of freedom analysis table. Okay, so let's look at a degree of freedom table. Okay, so the first thing that we need to look for is the number of independent variables associated with this particular unit, the separator. And as I mentioned before, a quick and easy way to count the number of independent variables is to simply count the number of components in each stream. Of course, bearing in mind that the number of uh, independent variables consists of S minus 1 uh, compositions plus one flow. Okay, so we have three components here, so that's three independent variables, another three here, and two here. So in total we have eight independent variables. Okay, I'm just going to write this in an abbreviated form. Independent variables. Eight. We've also looked at the number of independent balances or balance equations and as I mentioned previously, we can simply count the maximum number of components associated with the separator. So the maximum number of components will be this A, B and C, so that's a maximum number of three. It doesn't matter that this particular stream doesn't have any of the component C. We are simply looking at the maximum number of components associated with the separator. Okay, so the independent balance equations or independent balances would be 3. Okay, and I'm going to specify the degree of freedom here. Now note that we have eight independent variables that we need to solve for and if we solve these eight variables then we can calculate everything else about the separator in terms of a material balance. And because we have three balances then it means that at least three of these independent variables can be solved. However, five of them still cannot be solved.
Now despite that we cannot solve five variables because we only have three balances, certain variables are specified for us. Okay, so we have the flow rate which is specified for stream one, total flow rate. We have a composition as well. In stream two we have a composition and in stream three we also have two compositions. And also note that these are all independent specifications. Okay, these are absolutely necessary. I can't calculate these specifications otherwise. Now just as, a, as an aside, if we look at this particular stream here, the fact that they've given us A to be 0.95 in mole fraction, it also implies that they have given us B. But B is not an independent specification because if we have A, we have B, but we do need at least one of them. So we have been given one and the other is a dependent variable. Okay, so we have to make sure that we are counting the number of independent specified variables. Okay, so I can add on here independent specified compositions and independent specified flows. In terms of our compositions, we have been given one, two, three, four, four compositions. In terms of specified flows, we have been given just one flow. Now our degree of freedom is simply the difference between our independent variables and the summation of the balances and specifications. And as you can see, 8 minus 3 minus 4 minus 1. So we have a degree of freedom of 0. And what this means is that this problem is correctly specified. Okay, by taking into account the number of independent variables, the balance equations, the specifications they've given us, we are able to calculate everything else. Okay, so this is a quick way of knowing whether this problem is even solvable in the first place. Okay, so now that we've looked at a degree of freedom table, let's see if we can write out some balances or balance equations. Okay, so let's look at a balance for component A. Okay, note that when we are writing a balance, we have, to, we have to simply write in is equal to out because this is a separator, this isn't a reactor. So let's look at a balance concerning component A. For component A, we don't know what the composition is, so we can simply specify it or label it X1A. However, we do know what the total flow rate is. Okay, so that's your input. And in terms of the output of A, we know the mole fraction, but we don't know the flow. So, that's for stream 2. Sorry, that's 0.95 times N2 plus since we have been given the compositions of B and C and there are only three components by difference we can find the composition of A and that is ultimately 0 0.02 multiplied by the total flow rate of stream 3 which we still do not know at this point. The balance for component B can be written as follows. We have a mole fraction for B so of 0.15. So 
so we can simply write 0.15 times the total so that's your input and of course that would have to be equal to your output which is 0 0.05 okay that's from here 0 0.05 N2 plus 0.18 of N3. And for component C, we can express the composition of component C in terms of the composition of A and B. So instead of simply writing X1C because it's unknown, I can write it in terms of X1A. Okay, so that would be 1 minus X1A minus 0.15 times the total flow rate which is 100 and as we note there's no component C in stream 2 there's only a C in stream 3 so ultimately that means 0 plus 0.8 of N3 okay and these are our three balance equations. We can write a fourth one in terms of the total balance. N1 is equal to N2 plus N3. However, we don't have enough information about that. We have information regarding um, individual components and so we can stick to these three balances here. And this is often the case in many uh, mass uh, balance problems, material balance problems. Okay, so just rewriting this equation. Okay, multiplying these brackets out. Okay, and um, that's the expression there. And a simple rearrangement of all of these equations Okay, that's 1, 2, and 3, can give you the following. Okay, 85 is equal to 0 plus 0.8 of N3 plus 100X1A. That's simply rearranging this equation here. Rearranging the second equation, you can say that 15 0.05 N2 plus 0.18 N3 plus 0. And lastly, rearranging the first equation we get the following Okay, so these are my three equations. Okay, and I'll just number them one, two, and three. Note that we have three variables the total flow rate of stream two or N2, the total flow rate of stream three or N3, and the composition of component A in stream one. So that's three variables and three equations 
we can solve them simultaneously using um, techniques that you've learned in applied mathematics. Okay, so for example, we can rearrange equation one and thereafter try to get rid of the composition x1a by difference of equation one and three. And thereafter, we can get rid of n2 by difference of equations 2 and 3 to ultimately end up with n3. Okay, so let me see if I can get another page. Okay, so this is my previous equations here, equations 1, 2, and 3 and simply by rearranging them we can obtain the following Okay, and this is equation 4, which we have obtained by simply adding up equation 1 plus equation 3. So we got the following equation in terms of N2 and N3. We also already have equation 2 in terms of N2 and N3. which we can re-express in order to get rid of our N2. So let's firstly divide this entire equation by 0.95 and if we look at equation 2 we can divide this equation by 0 0.05 okay and we can subtract these two equations and ultimately get a value of N3 to be 76.84 kilomoles per hour. Okay, this is simple simultaneous equations. You've learned this in high school and you've also learned it in first year mathematics as well. Okay, and once we have N3, then using our previous equations we can use equation 1 for example to obtain x1a okay x1a works out to be 0.235 and we can also use equation 2 to obtain N2, which turns out to be 23.38. Okay, I hope you can see everything clearly. But this is essentially the problem solved now because we have our Remember that we had a degree of freedom analysis. We already had five specified compositions, including four, sorry, four specified compositions and one specified flow. And we needed to solve the three independent balances 
for to get our extra three variables now once we have these variables then ultimately we can calculate everything else in this system okay we know the composition of B composition of A and we now know the flows of stream 2 and stream 3 since we know the composition of A by solving simultaneously for it we can get the composition of C okay so that's how these problems are typically solved Now, let's look at this from a practical point of view. We note that we only knew one input flow rate. We didn't know these two flow rates here at all. And we knew we had an incomplete set of compositions as well. Well, we had some compositions in all three streams. But ultimately this means that we only needed one flow measurement. So we only need one flow meter here. Okay, so by applying these material balancing um, problem solving routines, we could save on putting a meter here and here. Okay, it was found to be unnecessary for streams two and three. Also, Full composition measurement was also unnecessary simply taking the composition of B in the input and noting the compositions in stream 2 and 3 we could get the remainder of the compositions now note that they are a total of four variables here three variables here and three here sorry four here so that's 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 actual variables, but due to our knowledge of independent variables, we found that there were only 8 that were independent. And from those 8, we could solve using, we could solve for 3 variables using our balances, independent balances. Ultimately, only 5 values actually needed to be specified we needed to measure these five values okay so ultimately it's quite a terrific saving in reality okay as opposed to the amateur's approach of just adding flow meters all over the place and taking composition measurements of each component and uh, drawing lots of samples unnecessarily Okay, and another point that we can discuss is homogeneity. Okay, note that in the above example, it concerns solving a system of linear equations. Okay, these are linear equations. And this is because the conservation of mass is a linear relationship. Since the relationship is linear, it can be scaled up quite easily as well. So instead of having an input of 100 kilomoles per hour, we could have had 1,000 kilomoles per hour or 10,000 kilomoles per hour. The outputs, the output flow rates here and here would change. However, the compositions will remain the same. And note that we have found the, for, for 100 kilomole per hour input, we found the output to be 23.38 okay that's for n2 and we found n3 to be 76.84 kilomoles per hour now the point I'm trying to make about homogeneity is that due to the linear relationship, if I have a thousand kilomoles per hour here, I can simply scale up the process and I can expect 
a flow rate of 230 kilomoles per hour in stream 2 and 760 kilomoles per hour in stream 3 because I am scaling it up by a factor of 10. And because I am just scaling it up and we have a linear relationship, the compositions will stay the same. Now in reality, this isn't going to be the case, right? It will depend on the design of the separator. We cannot simply put any amount of input in a distillation column or an absorption column and expect a simple scaled up result. However, the linear relationship of these mass balances assume that the when we are scaling up, the abilities of the separator are not affected. Okay, so we still have the same degree of separation, achieving the same compositions and a scaled up flow rate of the outputs. Now, this concept of homogeneity is quite useful if we are confronted with a problem that has no flow specifications. Okay, let's assume for example that this flow was not given to us. If this flow was not given to us, it means that there was absolutely no flow uh, specification at all in this problem. However, we can still obtain our output compositions if we simply assume a flow. We could have assumed 1 kilomole per hour, 10 kilomoles per hour, or 1000 kilomoles per hour, and we would still be able to obtain the same compositions that we have found by using these calculations here. Now assuming a value is a term known as a basis, okay, so we assume a basis. Okay, so, and also when we assume a basis, we are adding on a flow, a specified flow to our table. So, ordinarily, if there was no flow given, we would have a degree of freedom of 1. But if we simply specified a flow, that would allow one more specification, and our degree of freedom would be 0. And, we will, and this would make an otherwise unsolvable problem solvable. We would be able to obtain all of our compositions. Now we can reflect back upon this example and note that we followed a certain um, solution strategy. We considered the actual process, we drew up a degree of freedom table and we counted the number of independent variables and we looked at the number of balances as well as specified compositions and flows and this enabled us to determine whether we can actually solve for all of the compositions and flows associated with this process. Okay, and this process was solved by taking into account only the variables, the balances, and whatever other specifications were given. However, there is a final piece of information that can be considered before we look at an, a, more ex, a more elaborate example. And this is the element of subsidiary relations. Okay, note that in this particular example, we had essentially four elements to this freedom, degree of freedom table. We had the independent, the number of independent variables which we had to count as well as the number of independent balances which was dependent on the number of components associated with this process and also the number of specified compositions and flows. However, sometimes in addition to this information, additional information may be provided in the form of certain relationships. <coughs> And this may include fractional recoveries, composition relationships, or flow ratios. 
So instead of actually specifying the composition or the flows for certain problems, we could have a case where certain relationships are specified. For example, the fractional recovery. The problem could have stated that the flow rate of A in stream 1, well, 50% of it ends up in stream 2. Okay, so that's a fractional recovery. Or we can have a composition relationship, such as they would perhaps give you the ratio between the two compositions instead of actually giving you the compositions. Or we can or the flow ratios could be could have been provided a relationship such as perhaps the flow rate of stream 1 divided by the flow rate of stream 3 is perhaps i don't know 2 for example okay and we need to look at these subsidiary relations and how they are used on our degree of freedom table they add on a separate specification Okay, now let's consider an example. We have a feedstock and they're giving us a, f a flow rate of the feed and the feed consists of propane, isobutene, isopentane and n-pentane. As you can see, they've given us all of the compositions and what you would note from the previous lecture is that only these three compositions would be independent specifications. The fourth one is, of course, easily calculatable. <coughs> and this feedstock is going to be separated into two fractions by distillation. The distillate is to contain all of the propane fed, fed to the unit and 80% of the isopentane fed to the unit and is to consist of 40% isobutene. The bottom streams are to contain all of the n-pentane fed to the unit. And they want you to calculate the complete distillate and bottoms flow rate and composition. Okay, now the main challenge to these problems, or the first challenge, is to actually interpret the information that they've given us. So here is our distillation column, and here is our feed. They've given us all of this information. They've told us that the distillate contains 40% isobutene. So we have that there. XD2 is equal to 0.4. The bottom streams contain all of the n-pentane that was fed to the unit. So whatever n-pentane is here will ultimately end up here. Okay, but we don't know, we didn't calculate exactly the amount of n-pentane yet, so we've left, that, we've left that on hold. And since they told us that all of the propane fed to the unit goes to the distillate, we can also assume that, well it's not assumed, it's implied that the bottoms contains no um, propane. Now if we draw up a degree of freedom table, how would it look? Okay, degree of freedom table. Let's consider our independent variables. Okay, it's quite easy to, to calculate. We have four components associated with each stream, so it's 4, 8, and 12. Okay, so four independent variables. Then let's look at our independent balance equations. Since there are four components associated with this distillation column, we can write up four independent balances. Recall that the total number of balances is five, but one of the balances is dependent on the others. 
let's look at what they've given us or what was specified specified compositions they've given us the entire feed composition but as you would know only three of them are independent so that's three there they've given us the composition of the distillate the isobutene in the distillate and by telling us that all of the propane went to the distillate they've implied that there's no uh, there's no propane in the bottoms okay so that's another specification so we have three plus that one plus that one so that's five specified compositions how many flows did they give just one right the feed flow specified <clears throat> now at this point we can see that we have 12 independent variables but we only have a certain number of specified compositions flows and balances and currently our degree of freedom is 2 okay so currently this problem is not solvable or is it let's go back to our specifications okay it's told that the distillate contains all of the propane fed to the unit and 80% of the isopentane fed to the unit okay so our subsidiary relation Okay, we call them subsidiary relations, they are extra relations. At times they simply make the calculation easier, but many times they are absolutely essential. One cannot solve the problem without these subsidiary relations. Okay, so one of the relations is that 80% of isopentane fed to the unit ends up in the distillate. Okay, remember the main challenge is to interpret these subsidiary relations. Okay, so this one counts for one relation. And it also stated that all of the propane fed to the unit ends up in the distillate. So essentially they are telling us that NF1 is equal to ND1. Okay, whatever propane there was in the feed ended up in the distillate. And they are also saying that for the isobutene, sorry, the isopentane, 80% of whatever was in the feed ended up in the distillate. So ND3 is 0.8 of NF3. Okay, the component 3 is representative, representative of isopentane. So these are our two subsidiary relations. And now we can calculate the 12 minus 4 minus 5 minus 1 minus 2. And we have a degree of freedom of 0. So the problem is solvable. Okay, so let's look at how we can solve this problem. So what is our strategy? Okay, let's bring back the actual diagram. <clears throat> and we write out our balances just like we've done in the previous example. So let's look at our balances for propane. Ok, 
Okay, remember this is just a separation unit, so what goes in must come out. So whatever is in the feed must equal to the sum of the distillate and the bottoms. In the case of propane, we are told that all of it ends up in the distillate. Okay, so that's point two of the total feed flow rate. That will equal to XD1 times ND. We know neither of these at the moment. We know what NF is. Okay, and then isobutene. Okay, we have a composition of 0.3, so 0.3 NF, and we know the composition in the distillate, it was given to us, specified as 0.4, however we don't know what the composition is in the bottoms. Please bear with me, this pen is quite thick. <coughs> okay, for isopentane, we have 0.2 in the feed. <coughs> we've expressed it by difference in the distillate and we've expressed it by difference in the bottoms. Okay, if that's not clear enough, here it is. Okay, and we simply write it out with the same expression. Okay, we are just expressing the composition as a difference of the others. Okay, for the, that's for the distillate and for the bottoms. Oh, sorry, that's a minus. Okay, and finally for n-pentane. Since we know that there is no n-pentane in the distillate, then it is only in the bottoms. So it's our bottoms composition times our total bottoms flow rate. Okay, so this is the equations that our balances would give us. We can write out our subsidiary relations. F3 is equal to the composition in the distillate times the total. Okay, so that's your 80% of isopentane ending up in the in the distillate. And we can of course express this in other ways.
Okay, we know that NF3 is equal to 0.2 of NF. And we can express XD3 in terms of the other compositions. Okay, like, as we've written down over here. Okay, so let's just rewrite that. Point 0.2 of NF. In D. And we can open this out or multiply it out. Point 0.16 NF is equal to 0.6 minus xd1 of nd okay so that's our balances and our subsidiary relation recall that one of our subsidiary relations is already included in these balances as well Okay, so if we add some figures to this, if we multiply this NF out, we end up with the following balances. In D, that will equal to 200. is for the isobutene okay this is simply distillate plus bottoms is equal to feed okay for isopentane written as follows for n pentane it's quite simple there and if we multiply our subsidiary relation Okay, so we end up with the following five equations, which we can number. Note that we have five equations and five unknowns. We can solve equation 1 and 5 simultaneously. Okay, it's got xd1 nd in both of them. <coughs> so solving equations 1 and 5 simultaneously, we can end up with the following. So that's xd1 over xd1 times 200 okay that's just simply substituting this into equation 5 and that is equal to 160 and from there we can easily obtain xd1 
to be 0.333. And once we have x d1, we can substitute into equation 1. And we can obtain n d to be 600 moles per hour. Okay, so once we have our x d1 and n d, then we can proceed to obtain the other, <coughs> the other um, unknowns as well. Okay, if we take our total balance, we know that NB plus ND must be equal to NF. Since we have NF and now that we have obtained ND, Okay, NB turns out to be 400, since we know NF and ND. Let's go back to our other equations. So in equation 2, since we have ND and now that we have NB, we can get XB2. Substituting in we get XB two to be point one five and in equation four we can use equation four to get XB four since we already know NB. Okay, and that is the problem solved. Okay, and um, that was of course done using subsidiary relations. They have to be given to you, they aren't an invented thing. At times the challenge is to actually interpret the, subs the subsidiary relation. It's not always easy to write, in, to write down the relation accurately. Okay, so watch out for the number of stream variables, the number of balances, the number of specified flows and compositions, and finally watch out for any subsidiary relations that will help you to solve your problem.